over the last few weeks, you brought me pictures of examples of 3D shapes in our environment. Ne? And then I went and I made a poster for us, a collage. There it says 3D shapes. And I pasted the cubes together. I pasted the cones together. Look at all the rectangular prisms you brought. Ne? There's the cylinders. Only one triangular prism. Spheres. And there's all the pyramids. I want us to record, that means write down the different totals for each shape, okay? I integrated shapes with data handling because the learner's retention capabilities are very limited at this stage. I mean, they're only 19 or 11 years old in grade four. And throughout the whole syllabus, you know, we've got so much work to cover that sometimes you need to com combine two or more topics or content in order to get through the work a little bit faster. And you're also teaching them to think out of, to think broader, to think out of the, the spectrum. How many cubes are there on our collage? Hmm, let's see, Tulile. Two. Two. So I write the number two. The collage poster we've got on the wall is where I asked the learners a few weeks prior to today's lesson to bring me examples of 3D shapes in our environment that would include pictures of cereal boxes or a picture of a tent or a picture of a house's roof, you know, which is a triangular prism, pictures of balls or an orange. And then we just stuck it all on a poster um, underneath headings for each shape and then they could count to the total of those shapes and then that was the information we used for the data collection. Who could give me a better word? for information. Savannah. Data. Data or data, okay. So actually what we did is we did data collection or information collection. Now there are different ways we can record or write information, okay. The first way is just to write the frequency or the totals using numbers. Right, the second way is to use tallies. Now this is the word tallies. And the two L's in tallies will remind you what tallies are. What are tallies? Caitlin? Then it's when you put four lines and then you put one line through in the middle and then it makes five. You are superstar tallies. We make groups of five. It looks like this. Let me remind you. One, two, three, four. The fifth one goes through the middle. So if I have to show the number six, it will look like that. The number seven, because it's five plus two is seven. So this is the second way we can record information. Now using those totals, who wants to come and draw tallies? Hmm, see Claire. Starting with the cubes, draw for me tallies to represent the total cubes. Okay, very good. Let's do that. Who wants to come and draw the total for cones? Cutley? Is she right? Yes. Yeah. Ah, oh, let's give her a hand. Thank you. Ooh, the next one is a little bit difficult. 12 rectangular prisms. Looky. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The rest of these I'm going to leave for you because we're going to do this in our classroom book. Now, the third way. is to use a pictograph. That means we are simply going to use pictures to represent the information, okay? You can choose any picture you want. So all I'm going to use today is some little stick pen, okay, because it's fast. Cubes, two little pictures. That means one picture represents one cube, okay? So the rest here, I'm leaving open. You're going to do it in your book, okay? The last way I'm going to show you how to record information is using a bar graph. Now the first thing a bar graph needs is a title. What is this all about? Okay, 3D shapes. So let's make the title of our bar graph 
3D shapes. The title means? It's our heading. Okay. I start off the, the written work by doing examples with the learners on the board. I can I even call a few individual learners up. It makes them involved and excited and then suddenly everyone in class is paying attention again. And um, then afterwards I'll only do like a f first few examples and then the rest they have to do independently by themselves in their workbooks. Otherwise it's easy for them just to sit back and see what Mam's doing. Whenever we do word problems, there's a song that I taught you to remind you what the words mean. The word problem song is a song I came up about two years ago where I just realized the kids are, keep struggling with word problems. They keep struggling, struggling. I can tell them how many times that sum means plus or total means plus and they forget it. And then I just wrote this song and I gave it a tune and I've been teaching it every year and they just remember it and they can do word problems. If I ask you, which shape was the most popular? Lindy Way. Rectangular prisms. The rectangular prisms, because it has the highest amount. Which shape was the least popular? Ryden. Triangular prism. The triangular prism, only with one. If I ask you now, what is the difference between the most popular and the least popular shape. Asanda? Ma'am, you take 12 and minus it with 1, and then it will give you 11. You are a superstar. Can you see how from collecting information, collecting data or data, I can ask you different questions. And if you remember this song, it will be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yeah.